and welcome back to my channel. I am Sleepy Buck, and today we are going to be playing Kid at the Back. Um, it is a game of whimsy and past life lovers and um, Hugo, the love of my life, and Crow. He's here too. We don't even gotta mention Soul because we already know. So. Grab a seat, grab something warm to drink, and allow your cozy self to drift into the stars with me. We already ran over ourselves to join Soul, so this time we are going to call Soul over. Without much thought, you walk to where Soul is as he almost immediately noticed you, a smile appearing on his face. <laughs> My baby. His companion noticed his change in attitude and turned to you. You turn to Hugo beside him and greeted him as well. He gives you a grin. Hey there, thanks again for taking care of this guy. And you forgot to tell me what soul looks like. Hugo just let out an awkward chuckle. He just winked at you. Oh, but you didn't miss this handsome face, didn't you? Hugo teased, grabbing soul's jaw and showed it off, earning him an irritated groan from the tall individual. You are embarrassing. Sorry about him letting you take over his responsibility. Hugo pouted, letting go of Soul. He shook his head with a slight giggle. It's not a problem. I'm glad I got to meet you in the process. Hugo gave Soul a teasing nudge on his ribs, causing him to bend over a bit before rubbing Hugo's head, taking advantage of his height compared to Hugo's. Then you hear a group of footsteps behind you. Oh God. Hugo first noticed the group behind you as he raised his head to meet one of their gazes. I'm nervous about this interaction. <laughs> I should I should be nervous, but I'm nervous. There you are, Sleepy. You just ran off like that. I kind of got worried. You with these people, Sleepy? Hugo is wild. <laughs> Hugo said, you know them? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Sorry for running off like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Soul? Hugo? These are my friends. You turn your body to face Crow and the others while your gaze is still fixated on the duo. Crow gives the two a smile and a small wave. Daryl came up first, extending his hand for one of the two to take. Nice to meet you. I'm Daryl. And if you haven't heard yet, I am the ace of our school's football club. Said with a smile, Hugo took his hand with a shake. Hey, Hugo. Following up is Brittany as she stares at a hand on her hip. Oh. Following up is Brittany as she just stares with a hand on her hip while Jess was twiddling her fingers as she stuck close to Brittany's side. Brittany, Jess, and Daryl, it seems that only Daryl is the most enthusiastic out of all of them in this newfound friendship. Look at Hugo. I'm Hugo. I heard about you, Daryl. Nice to meet you, too. Thankfully, Hugo returned the same energy as the, the job. I'm Jericho, but people call me Crow. Nice to make your acquaintance. Mm. Crow also handed out his hand for Soul to take. However, Soul did not take it. There was a slight awkwardness in the air between the two males, making Crow slowly retrace his hand back. No way! The atmosphere between the two, however, was cut short when Hugo gave out a loud gasp and marched towards Gio, who was way behind the group, a visible scowl on his face. <laughs> Are they cousins? I could feel- I could see them being cousins. Gio's eyes darkened as he tried to step back, but Hugo was quick on his feet as he engulfed the taller male into a hug. Okay, so I think that's a Sabaru Sashifuri. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're related. Sabaru Sashifuri! Y'all, I can't read kanji. Hold on, we're gonna have to... I'm translating this one. He called them troublesome. They're cousins. You can't tell me. You can't tell me otherwise. Oh, I think they have the same eyes. <gasps> eh? I don't want to see your ugly face the entire day. No. The entire semester. But my luck seems to be slipping. Hey, hey now. There's no way to greet your brother. Called it! <laughs> Another loud gasp was heard. This time, it came from Daryl. 
He points at Gio quite a bit dramatically. You have a brother, Gio? Oh, great, another one. <laughs> That's. Oh no, and he's so tiny! Oh, I love my short king. This is. This is. There's never been a better day than this. Alright, guys. Well, I've lived a good life. Um, if I die tomorrow, I love you guys. I'm all right with it. That's big brother to you. <laughs> Everyone's attention was now on the three of them. Brittany seemingly amused by Gio's newfound dilemma. Crow just chuckled while Jess was surprised as well. Oh, right. Hugo started, finally letting go of Gio. The said male cursing under his breath as he composed himself and fixed his now ruffled hair as he walked towards you. We were actually going up to the roof for lunch today. We were hoping that you would like to come with us. He says, now standing beside Sol. Sol looks at you with anticipation. Aww. You? Okay, I'm gonna do this just to see. I mean, sure. Oh, um, but I need to tell the others first if that's okay. Sure thing, take your time. Thanking and excusing myself from the duo, you turn to the group, specifically to Crow. Nervously, suddenly engulfed you as you tapped the blue-eyed male on the shoulder. Crow tilted his head and turned his full attention to you. Is it alright for me to come with them for today? I I'm fine with it, Sleepy. Oh, he's British now, so just everybody knows. Just because I have one distinctive male voice and he's British. He paused as if suddenly remembering something. But you have to ask Brittany for that as well. Upon hearing her name, Brittany turned her head towards you. You noticed a basket around one of her arms. Brittany, however, didn't give you a chance to ask. You can go ahead, Sleepy. You can join us whenever you want. She gives you a smile, surprising you a bit. Without further ado, you excuse yourself from the group before joining with Sol and Hugo. Hugo gives you a smile and you turn to Sol. He gives you a smile of his own. His shoulders relax as if relieved. Let's go then. Alright, Hughie. I'm gonna stay with the group. You give Hugo a sad smile. I'd love to join you, Hugo, but I'd like to stay with them for today if that's alright. Hugo gives you a sad smile of his own before nodding his head, failing to notice how one of Soul's eyes twitch. Oh, that's alright, Sleepy. But hit us up if you ever want to hang out, okay? You nodded, and ga he gave you an enthusiastic thumbs up. <laughs> I love him. Before you could turn to Soul to apologize to him, Hugo quickly dragged him away. You noticed how his strides were slow and hesitant as Hugo dragged him away. You shrugged before turning with Crow to the rest of the group. The school surprisingly has a public garden with a greenhouse just a few steps ahead. Multiple courses just would go and plant needed flora depending on their necessities. Or sometime the school nurse would spend her time leisuring around and embracing the fresh air. I want that for myself. I love that for all of us. You happen to be a volunteer and taking care of the garden along with the plants in the greenhouse, hence explaining how you got a set of keys. It just reminds you of home. Brittany went ahead and laid down a large picnic bat blanket under a large tree in the middle of the field. She sat down her basket and started taking out some contents. Daryl and Jess followed along while Gia leaned against the bark of the tree. Let's see, owie! Not yet. Brittany slapped Daryl's hand away from the basket before he could raid the whole thing, making him wince and pout. Calm your butt down, you'll have your turn. At this point, I'll have to charge you all every time y'all hit me. Are you some sort of masochist? I feel like Hugo has a type. <laughs> and so do I. Am I just Hugo? Is that why I love him so much? Am I just Hugo? Like I'm just puppy dog energy and I love big cat boy energy. Anywho, Daryl gave Gio a side eye. Brittany shook her head while Jess just giggled. 
Oh, this is cute. It was a cute little get together that Brittany planned last night. She wanted to make a few sandwiches, so she prepared lots of varieties. On the blanket are a few Tupperwares of some of the sandwiches inside, while the rest were eaten. Everyone got their fair share already, but now everyone is just minding their own business. Daryl is having the time of his life with two sandwiches in both hands. Brittany and Jess are talking. Gio is a bit further away from the group, leaning on the bark of the tree, seemingly lost in thought. But Crow is nowhere to be seen. What? Gio! 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 No! Daryl seems to be the least busy out of everyone. You approached his sitting figure as you took a seat in front of him. One sandwich gone from him's hand as he munched on the other. Does Gio have a crush on Daryl? Turns out he's just like Big Brother after all, huh? Oh wait, no. Turns out he likes guys like his Big Brother after all, huh? Other way around. Oh no, they both brother cons then. I woven myself a story that I don't like. Who's here? Hi. Did you come to make a special appearance? Oh hello. Hi. You stinky puppies. Okay, I gotta finish now. All right. I'll be done soon. Okay, bye bye. Get you have a moon. We've been graced by an angel. You approached his sitting figure as you took a seat in front of him. One sandwich gone from his hand as he munched on the other one in his other hand. He notices you and stopped eating, tucking away the sandwich and placing all of his attention on you. Oh, he's like a puppy. Here. You took out the half eaten sandwich you got from Gio and handed it to him. He tilted his head to the side. You can't finish yours? It's from Gio. <laughs> really now? Not gonna lie, it's quite uncharacteristic of him. Usually, he would either finish it or throw it away. Not that I'm complaining though. Thanks, Sleepy. I love him. Daryl thanked you with a smile and took the half-eaten sandwich from you before tucking it away. Why are they all so stinking cute? Oh my god. You got something to ask me, Sleepy? I love him. I love him. Uh, ooh. Let's ask about Geo. We're going down the list. What are your thoughts on Geo? Daryl smiled as he leaned a bit forward. And now Geo's my favorite guy. Even if he's a bit of a meanie at times. What makes you stick to him? Isn't he meanie you like you said? Daryl's smile brightened as his eyes went soft. His... He side-eyed the male by the tree who had his arms crossed. Gio's attention was somewhere else. People are scared of him. It's probably because of his background. What about it? The thing is, no one really knows what his family does other than the fact that they're super rich and that they are highly involved with the founder of the city. People have seen him with bodyguards, all rugged and tall and very intimidating. Heck. I even saw one of the with a huge katana on their backs. You shivered. Clearly, you don't want to deal with them. But what makes you not scared of Daryl? But what makes you not scared, Daryl? I mean, you clearly know what his family and himself is capable of. You see, Sleepy? I'm not really scared of him. On the outside, he's all stubborn and cruel. But on the inside, he's a really nice guy. Think of him like, uh... He pursed his lips, thinking a bit. He's like a stubborn cat. <laughs> this is why we love G. I told you, I have. I love puppy energy, but I love cat boy energy even more. You glanced back at Gio one more time. You're seeing the cat ears and the tail, all right. <laughs> now that you think about it, the vision based on Daryl's declaration, Gio does seem quite intimidating. Gio does not seem quite intimidating anymore. How cute. When you hear a sigh from Darrow, you return your attention to him, an elbow on his leg as he held his face in his hand. Which begs me to wonder how he ended up being in the lower class with us. The low class? How do we have things like that? Oh, you don't know about the hierarchy, Sleepy? You shook your head no and Darrow scratched the back of his head. Oh, darn. Well, Sleepy, almost everyone knows about it. Well, I don't blame you since no one really likes bringing up that type of subject. I think either Crow or Jess would like to explain it to you. 
just not Brittany. She gets riled up when it's mentioned. You nod an understanding, and Daryl gives you a smile. Anyway, you got something to ask me, Sleepy? Uh, let's ask about you. I'd like to know more about you, Daryl. Daryl rubbed the back of his head. Quite embarrassed, you thought about him. Well, aren't you a flatterer? Where should I start? The <laughs> he thought for a while, his legs crossed while you waited for him as he pondered. Well, I am the ace of our football club. I hate my coach, but don't tell him that. Mm, I love food. I like lots. My most favorite would be sweets. If you ever got any on ya, smuggle me some, will ya? Oh no, he's just a cutie pie. He says with a wink and a nudge. Other than that, uh, I guess that's pretty much it. I, let's ask about Jess. Why'd the music stop? Why'd the music stop, Daryl? Daryl? What do you, what do you think about Jess? You can't tell me Jess isn't horribly in love with Brittany, but it's okay. I'm not neither here nor there. At the mention of Jess's name, Daryl's whole face turned red as he started sweating. What, what, what about her? <laughs> I don't know. I'd like you to tell me. What do you think about her? Daryl's cheeks just keep getting redder and redder for a moment. His gaze turned to where Jess and Brittany were. He sighs as he looks away. Jess is... The sweetest human being I've ever met. Oh? Uh, don't, but don't tell anyone. I trust you with this because Crow trusts you, okay? All right, all right. I don't know what's the big fuss yet, but I promise I won't tell. You raise your hands and surrender. The taller Jack deflated on the spot. His shoulders down along with his mood. But, yeah. She's the sweetest. She's pretty. She's cute. While some would make fun of me, she's always there to give me a pat on the back. He groans, doubling over. His expression seems like he wants to throw up as he buried his face in his hands. But I doubt she likes me back. You tilt at your head, wondering what he, th why he thinks that way. What makes you say that? Called it. <laughs> the way she looks at Brittany. Don't you think that's the look of someone in love? At that, your eyes widen in surprise. You quickly turn your head to where the two girls were. Give us a give us the glimpse. The eyes behind the transparent frames looked like fresh citrus oranges in the summer. They were bright, and they were fresh for the picking for Brittany. I know because that's the same look I gave her when I first met her, and that's the same look I see on Crow when he looks at you. What did you say? <laughs> Daryl out here uh, giving everybody information. We out in people. He twirled a loose strand from his bangs. He looked away from the two girls and focused on your surprise figure. I hate it. But I love seeing that look on her face. I wish it was on me, though. I... I'm sorry, Daryl. <laughs> He chuckled a bit. It's all right. Maybe one day I'll confess just to get it off my chest. All I want is to see her happy, even if it's not with me. Anyway, enough sad stuff, Sleepy. Remember five seconds ago when I was like, oh my god, I'm Team Hugo. And then five seconds after that, I was like, oh my god, I'm Team Soul. And then five seconds over that, I was like, oh my god, Gio. Guess what? It's Daryl. Daryl deserves best. He deserves better. Best boy. Uh, let's ask about Brittany. Daryl gives you a proud smile. <sighs> Brittany? She's my first friend back when I was new on the football team. You'd be surprised she used to be in a cheer squad despite her being quite introverted. She was? Daryl's bright smile softened, a small gloomy look in it. He was trying so hard to hide it but was failing. Yeah. She quit right after the game's big frat party two years ago. That party was something else, since the higher classes were also a part of it. <sighs> the following day, she suddenly quit. I don't know why, though. 
Not quite worth thinking about the past anyway. That one just hurt my feelings. So, what do you think about Crow? At the mention of the blue-eyed friend of his, Daryl gives you a toothy grin as he wiggles his eyebrows. You want jits on your little crushy, don't you, sleepy? Sh shut up! I just admire him, okay? Shut up! Shut up! Don't help me! Daryl laughed and stopped his teasing, saving you further embarrassment. Crow is quite an individual. All I know is that he's the son of a very successful businesswoman in the city. Though, I heard he doesn't have a great relationship with his family. What makes you say that? Daryl thought for a bit, but judging from his experience, his expression, he couldn't understand why either. I don't know either, Sleepy. You should ask Crow for that if you want to learn more. I see. Don't worry, Sleepy. I'm sure he'll do anything you ask for. He gives you a playful wink. You rolled your eyes, but give him a smile nonetheless. Thank you for answering my questions, Daryl. Anytime, Sleepy. You're one of us now, so open up a little. Anything for you, Daryl. <laughs> Anything for you, Daryl. I'm going to go mess with Gio again. Daryl gives you a small smile before nodding. I am picking the love of my life. Him. You were hesitant to approach Gio at first. You always saw him as someone quite intimidating. Am I gonna? I'm just gonna. More intimidating than Brittany. It's the love of my life. He's got glitter for skin, a radiant beam in the night. It's probably the way he carries himself. His towering height isn't helping either. And it seems like you've been staring at him for too long. Oh no, he's looking at me now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. He stopped chewing on his sandwich as his gaze met yours. He you shivered. What do you want? Nothing. I have questions. I do have questions. <laughs> I... I shouldn't love Gio as much as I do, but I do. And you know what? I want to start a fan club. I want to start a Hugo Gio. I have a thing for the siblings. That's terrible. If you have nothing to say, then don't bother me. He seems uninterested in talking anymore. His sandwich half eaten before throwing it in the nearest trash bin. He's so edgy. I think it's better to not disturb him. Nah, Gio, we got questions. Oh, what if we ask him again? Will, it, will he get pissed off? <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> you turn back to Gio. He side-eyed you for a brief moment, but he didn't say anything as he continued gazing at the sky. He seemed to be ignoring your presence. <laughs> it's better you didn't disturb him. I have questions. Hurry up and spit it out. You and Hugo know each other? Girl, you didn't hear? His eye twitched. You think you had a sensitive nerve. I don't, and I don't want to associate myself with him. Whatever he said back in the hallway, forget about it. Is that so? If that's all you have to say to me, then leave. He's so emo. Wait! Actually, I'm curious as to why... Why do you hang out with us? I mean, I don't mean it in a bad way. It's just that... I'm curious, because you seem like you hate us. You don't seem the type to... His piercing gaze made your voice die down. You cursed under your breath. Crap. I think this is it for me. This beautiful tall man is going to murder me. Mm. I get it. But you wouldn't understand. Leave me to my devices. Now. He demanded before wrapping the half-eaten sandwich he had in his hand before throwing it towards you. You caught it, nearly losing your balance. And give that to Daryl. I just lost my appetite. Gio! Gio then crossed his arms and looked up at the sky, the chilly autumn breeze passing by him, making his long hair sway along with his washy earrings. You take a look at the wrapped, half-eaten sandwich in your hand. I guess I'll never know. You sigh. 
I love him. <laughs> Degrade me some more, daddy. Stop it. Get some help. Let's speak to my girl, Brittany. Brittany was minding her own business, seemingly tapping away on her phone. You were kind of shy to come any closer to her. But before you could turn and leave, however, she called out to you. She must have seen you from the corner of her eye. Oi, sleepy. Come here. Don't be a stranger now. You clearly want to talk. I have the biggest, fattest, most innocent crush on Britney. Like, I really... I don't know if it's because I really admire her and like she just she's so sweet like she she looks intimidating and she looks like hardcore but she is so sweet and she seems very genuine so she's she just seems like she ain't got a filter I love her though anyway don't be a stranger now you clearly want to talk let me guess where the sandwich is great <laughs> they're wonderful she smiled at your response. I'm glad you like them, Sleepy. Anyway, enough of my sandwiches. <gasps> yes, give me my Britney shot. Have you seen Crow? Thoughts on Daryl. Thoughts on Jill. Thoughts on Jess. Did I go through everybody? No, I didn't get to speak to Jess. Uh, let's go down. What's your thoughts on Jess? Upon hearing her name, Jess's head turned to where you both were. Britney dismissed her telling her it's nothing for her to worry about before turning back to you. Jessie? She's my best friend. She smiled as she looked at the orange band on her wrist. They're girlfriends. My very best friend. When no one was there to help me, she was there. You'd be surprised how confident and loud she is when she's mad. Brittany chuckled a bit as if reminiscing a fond memory. I owe it all to her for bringing me back up the during those dark times. But enough of the past. I want them to be girlfriends. Brittany raised an eyebrow. No, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't have the hots for Gio. <laughs> don't tell me you have the hots for him. N nothing of the sorts. What makes you think of that? I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you do. If you can see how his locker is often filled with multiple love letters and gifts from various people, then I wouldn't be surprised. He's that popular? A loner like him? You'd be surprised. Tall, mysterious, and dangerous. Everyone just flocks to him like a bird. I'm the people. I'm the person. <laughs> but people are scared to even get close to him. So the next best thing they can do is just send him gifts. Nah, I'd be in his face and be annoying. I'm like, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> it's good to see you. I'll Pavlov him. Be like, here, here's a piece of candy every day. And then one day I don't come to school and he doesn't get his candy. And he's like, they never succeed though. Is he somehow overwhelmed by the attention? Not really overwhelmed, more like he is uninterested. <laughs> he either doesn't read the letters or tosses them or, or he burns them. Oh no, he, he burns them. <laughs> That's so mean and a waste of gifts too. Brittany just left, her shoulders shaking. That's Gio to you. How do you know all of this? Brittany giggled before giving you a wink as she pressed her manicured finger to her lips as if to shush you. I know a lot of secrets. Anyway, I I love Brittany. I want to marry her. Brittany just chuckled. You mean that me head? He's an idiot. She says with a smile, and then she sighed. She shakes her head at the thought of the tall jock. He's an idiot, but he's a smart idiot. I'll give him that. He's like a brother to me. It just baffles me how he barely has any friends. How this school fails us. She shakes the idea before turning her attention back to you. And then, have you seen Crow? Crow? I think I saw him go deeper into the gardens. Brittany said with a raised eyebrow. Let me guess. You want to finally confess your undying feelings for him? Oh, what makes you think that? Oh, wow. 
I'm not sure who is denser. Him or you? Whatever. If you need him, he's probably in the greenhouse. Brittany gives you a thumbs up, mouthing a good luck. <laughs> As if I'm confessing, you thought with a pout. I'm still doing my Brittany please. <laughs> Brittany just gives you a teasing smirk. Anyway, enough of that. You have something to tell me? How come there's not one about her? I want to ask about her. I want to ask about Brittany. <sighs> Brittany gives you a nod before standing up from the ground. She stretches her limbs, letting out satisfying pops. She places a hand on her hip. I'll be cleaning a bit. I'll talk to you later, sleepy. Do you want any help? No, thanks. I appreciate it, though. You nod and stood up as well, leaving Brittany to attend her own devices. She's just such a sweetheart. Like, you cannot... Aw, Jessie Poo! Look at her. Not me falling in love with all these characters. Oh, my God. Jess was admiring a few orange leaves falling from the tree. The slow descent of a leaf catches her attention before gracefully catching it in her delicate fingers. She notices you approaching her. She dropped the leaf before giving you her full attention. I yes, Sleepy? What seems to be the problem? Oh, there's nothing, actually. I just wanted to talk to you and ask a few questions. Then, by all means, go ahead. I'll try my best to answer them. Oh. Uh... Should we just go straight? Oh, my heart. Let's start with you. Start easy. Jess's shoulders start shaking at the mention of the tall and stoic individual. I hate to be one of those people, but he actually scares me. Have you ever seen how capable he is with a bow and an arrow? I want to see. I want to see him and Hugo shoot an arrow. And everything's fine guys no actually is he really good at that i know that he's from the archery club oh then you should definitely attend the sports events next year Gio is going to compete and the higher classes will be there to determine if the students are worth bringing up another shiver went up to her spine she wrapped her arms around herself a bad memory crosses her mind but whenever that happens, Gio seems to somehow miss his target and nearly hit someone with an arrow. Mm? What? What the heck? Thankfully, it only cut the guy's hair and nothing else. He got disqualified, sadly. And that was enough for me to not mess with him. <laughs> How is he not in jail? <laughs> it's because he's cute. You try to rack for your brain for a reason as to why he's in school and not behind bars, but Jess cuts you off before you could think any further. Uh, enough of that. <laughs> I love Gio. Like, the more that I learn about Hugo and Gio, the more that I'm like, ooh, I am, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck forever, <laughs> loving them. Ask about Darrow. At the mention of Daryl, Jess's face went bright. This is probably the first time you've ever seen her smile without shaking like a lost lamb. Oh, Daryl? He's an amazing friend. He keeps me safe. I owe it up to him quite a lot. Though, I do feel bad for him most of the time. Brittany and Gio tease him way too much. Jess chuckled, looking at the jock sitting under the tree before returning back to you. He's a funny guy. I remember back then when I made the mistake of giving him a bowl filled with candy last year's Halloween. Did he tell you he likes sweets? Why? What's wrong with you giving him candy? Well, he gets sugar rush pretty quickly, and he gets super hyper. Brittany tried so hard to calm him down. <laughs> Can you imagine? A six foot tall jockey going around like a playful puppy. <laughs> I bet Brittany didn't have a fun time. Just nodded it with a close smile at you. Already, here we go. What do you think about Brittany? Called it. Upon mentioning the Giraru's name, one day, Brittany's head turned to the both of you. She didn't say anything, but raised a brow as she tilted her head to the side. 
You caught for me? N nothing, Brit. Jess quickly shooed her best friend away. Brittany shrugged before continuing on with her business. Jess lets out a sigh of relief as a small red tint raises on her cheeks. Jess looked down at her skirt, fiddling with the pink wristband as her heartbeat quickened. Brit, she's my best friend, my very best friend, and I would do anything to see her happy again. She pushed back her glasses and looked at you, and there you saw the sparkles. Her smile is so soft and you can tell. Jess, do you like Brittany? She was hesitant before looking down, nodding as she did so, still fiddling with her pink wristband. Promise not to tell? I promise. Thank you, Sleepy. This will just be between the two of us. Besides, she gives you a big smile. <laughs> I'll keep your oh-so-secret crush towards Crow a secret, too. She giggled at your surprised look at the mention of Crow. You rubbed the back of your head as you pouted. Everybody just knows that we're just fawn, just, just fawning over Crow. Love you, Crow, but <laughs> certain emo boy has stolen my- Have you seen Crow? Oh. Jess's eyebrows furrowed and she shakes her head. I don't think I know where Crow is. Maybe you should ask Brittany. Maybe she knows. You thanked her. Thanks for talking. I want to also know about you. Oh my goodness. Jess nods as she clasps her hands. It was so wonderful talking to you, Sleepy. We should hang out with us more. And with that, she gives you a wave goodbye. All right, let's go look for Crow. You pretty much talked with everyone here, and they all seem to be busying themselves. You look around the garden before moving in deeper with the red autumn wonderland. As you keep moving forward, you're greeted by the greenhouse. Through the transparent glass, you spot a familiar head of brown. You went inside the greenhouse and saw Crow go through each plant and flower, analyzing each delicate leaf and petal. Noticing he's not alone, he turns to where you were and smiled. Oh, there you are, Sleepy. What brings you here? I would say that same thing to you. Well, I haven't really explored this place properly before, so why not take that chance? You've never been here before? Crow shakes his head. I never got the time to visit. Crow chuckles. You meet his gaze and he gives you a soft smile. His gaze lingers a bit before going around. He then found something that caught his attention. Now this is pretty looking, Flora. What do you think this is? You looked at the brush of flowers filled with purple flowers. Their petals thin as the sh it showcased its full bloom. This is a passion flower. Fascinating. Tell me more about it. Well, it's a climbing vine plant. Usually its colors are purple and white. Once flowers blossom, passion fruits will bear itself. Usually a volunteer would come here and harvest the fruits. That sounds interesting, Sleepy. You don't care. You just want to flirt. But that's the scientific way to describe this flower. How about its meaning? You tilt your head to the side. What do you mean? How do I say this? He places a hand under his chin. In astrology, each star has a meaning behind it. Same goes with gemstones like your birthstone. Flowers have those as well, correct? Huh, I never really thought of it. Crow gives a cheeky smile. It's interesting. Passion flowers symbolized hope and growth. I love seeing the hopeful looks of people. He says as he looks at the flower before you both. Hope. Something the city needs. I want to get rid of the hierarchy. Daryl mentioned something about that. Actually, everyone did. But how come I never heard of it? What is it about? I never got to explain it to you, huh? 
I guess now's the perfect time since they're quite active in interacting with us in the lower class again. He looks out. Our school, Olympias University, has two buildings with two different classes. One is where we are at the moment, the lower class, while around the northern part of the city is where the higher classes are. There, education is ten times better, the facilities are better, and the students are way out of our league. He hesitates in a big he hesitates a bit in voicing his thoughts of the students in the higher class. I thought, though I highly doubt that, he added, his eyes narrowed. Calling it lower class is kind of low, in my opinion. Call them villagers, hum humble people. they either really kind or either too busy to bother. There's a hint of hesitation in his voice. Well, not all. Failed students in the higher class often end up here with us, and well, they don't really take it well, which explains the bullying situation. Crow's brow slanted downward, disgusted by the idea. The fact he can't do anything is irritating him. How come no one tried to file a report or anything? People tried. I tried. We tried. But unless you either have money or a higher reputation, Heck, even both. They'll bother to even listen. Crow sighs. Which is why some students try their hardest to get up the ranks, to be part of the higher class. All of that just to be respected as a human being like you're living in America, where they don't respect you based on your sexuality, gender, and or racial background and ethnicity? Crow didn't say anything to you, but a nod. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The hierarchy? Crow lets out a sad laugh. The system is kind of a, if you feel it, you feel it thing. You don't really feel it, much less see it unless you've been at its mercy. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, Sleepy. You'll never know who is the next victim. A soft, sad smile made its way on his face, which is why I strive to protect you. Okay, you can protect me. Both of those sound so... You were left to your thought process, to what Crow told you about the newfound information. This probably explains the bullying and how the school is handled. Your position in the city is just a second priority. Heck, maybe not even a priority at all. That means if I ever want to keep my family's farm up, I have to make it up there? Crow nodded before continuing. Once you're up there, you'll have a better life. You'll be respected. You'll be rich. People will do as you tell them. That's messed up. Did people ever protest? Crow, however, did not answer, as if scared that someone would hear him. He remained quiet, only giving you a look that probably says that things did not go that well. You refuse to ask for more elaboration. That reminds me, Sleepy. Crow starts. You never told me as t how or why you chose the university. Your family owns a farm, correct? You bit your lip as you thought of home. We do, but I wouldn't say we're doing well. I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay, really. It's my burden to carry and not yours. I'm gonna have to work hard for it. Anything. I'll do anything. But you are nearing the end of the school year, and you can't afford to go back again. Not with this debt. Credit alone isn't enough to cut it. Whenever you think about it, you keep seeing the tall man's every sharp magenta eyes burning into you. It leaves a bad taste in your mouth and a stinging feeling in your chest. Your heart ached as you stared back into Crow's own azure eyes. Are you alright there, Sleepy? You zoned out a bit. If... If I get to be part of the higher class, then I can have a better chance in life, right? Crow was surprised at your sudden enthusiasm, but nodded regardless. Uh, that That's right. 
As you give Crow a reassuring smile, you clenched your fist. And I'll work hard to show those higher class that I am worth their time. Crow chuckles and nods. You know that he's got your back. Then Crow raised a hand and tucked a loose strand behind your ear. You sensed him placing something soft, and you reached to touch it. You felt it like petals. That looks good on you. But what is it? Crow then leads you to a nearby pond. You looked and saw your reflection. On your hair is a red carnation. Oh, I didn't know carnations grew here. Crow only chuckled, fixing the hair, the flower on your hair. Then Crow was silent, asking your presence. His expression then went dim, as if something's bothering him. You took notice of it. Is something the matter, Crow? He blinked once. Twice. He averted his gaze, a bit hesitant to speak up. You grabbed his hand to reassure him that it's fine. He sighs as he speaks. Your friend. My friend? The tall one in green. Oh, what are your thoughts on him? So, he's the love of my life. He's the absolute love of my life. He's the love of my life. He's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me let me say first. We okay. <clears throat> He's cute. Curl chuckles at your comment, though it feels strained. Is that so? Then tell me, sleepy. Do you like him? W what makes you say that? Yes. You did say he's cute. I just think he's cute. That's all. Crow stopped his teasing, but the dullness in his eyes remained. Crow looks around for a while, basking in the various beauties of Flora. What do you think carnations means? You tilted your head, making sure that the said flower doesn't fall from your head as Crow continued on with his talk. Passion flower means hope, while carnations mean... Hmm... I couldn't seem to remember. What do you think it means, Sleepy? You thought for a while, knowing some carnations are found in bouquets. Well, it has to be something romantic. They're often a perfect gift for family and loved ones. Is that so? I might just look up what it means then. Your eyes meet his for a moment. His gaze lingered. He's such a sweet, soft boy. But he's probably going to be crazy too. Anyway. Were his eyes always this blue? You never noticed before. The way his lashes flutter and touch his cheeks when he blinks. His plump lips are always glistening whenever sunlight hits them. He said, I wear chapstick. His eyes went half-lidded as he leaned closer and closer. As if in a trance. Your eyes slowly start to close. So this one we're gonna we're gonna we're not gonna okay we're gonna stay put because we already said that we thought uh, uh we thought um soul was cute. You froze. You felt your heart beating fast. The feeling of blood rushing and rising to your cheeks as you try to rethink what is happening. Ooh! <laughs> Nar! Crow, you better go. Of of course, Brittany. Your eyes pop open and you quickly backed away. Crow backed away as well as he waved to Brittany. Brittany just raised a brow at the both of you before shrugging it off and leaving the greenhouse. Our moment! Crow sighed, seemingly disappointed before giving you his hand for you to take. We should get going. You pouted at the ruined moment before accepting his extended hand and left the greenhouse with Crow. You and the rest of the group got back inside the campus. Everyone already went to their respective classes. I'm going to head back first. I'll see you in class, Sleepy. Uh, of, of course. 
Crow didn't walk away just yet. He stood there for a while, contemplating something before shaking his head and walking away, a tint of red touching the tips of his ears as he walked. Just by the corner of your eye, you spotted two familiar-looking individuals. It was Sol and Hugo. Sol noticed you first and went to you, a noticeable skip in his steps. I'm fine. Sleepy. Hey, Sol. Hey, Hugo. Are you both heading to your next class? Hugo laughed, a hand on his chest, as if you told him a very funny joke. Hugo, no! I, actually, I have a better idea. Let's skip class. Skip class? Yeah, it'll be fun. Sol here was ma- Sol gave Hugo a punch on his ribs, making the shorter male choke out the words he was supposed to say as he doubled over, clutching his stomach. Let's ditch. <laughs> He's the love of my life. I'm fine. Hugo just gave him a glare. Sol ignored him as he anticipated your answer. Hanging out with these two sounds fun, but you remember the next class with Crow. Maybe you can... Man! Uh, nothing more but a classmate. Crow's eyebrows raised. Is that so? Yeah, besides, he's my partner for art class, so I'm basically stuck with him until the projects are done. I see. Crow nodded. He didn't say anything afterwards. However, his gaze was far, pondering something be before shaking it off from his mind. Crow looked away for a while, basking in the various beauties of Flora. Your eyes met with his, and for a moment, his gaze lingered. Were his eyes always this blue? You never noticed before. The way his eyelashes flutter and touch his cheeks when he blinks. His plump lips are always glistening whenever sunlight hits him. His eyes went half-lidded as he leaned closer and closer. As if in a trance, your eyes were slowly start to close. Lean in, lean in. As if you lost control of your body and started moving on his own, you leaned closer as well. Your eyes now closed, feeling his breath near your own lips as he draws closer and closer. Crow, you better- Of course, Brittany. Your eyes propped open and quickly backed away. Crow backed away as well as he waved to Brittany. Brittany just raised an eyebrow at the both of you before shrugging it off and leaving the greenhouse. Crow sighed, seemingly disappointed before giving you his hand for you to take. We should get going. You pouted at the moment ruined before accepting its extended hand and left the greenhouse with Crow. I'm I'm going to head back first. I'll see you in class, Sleepy. Uh, of course. Crow didn't walk away just yet. He stood there for a while, contemplating something before shaking his head and walking away, a tint of red touching the tips of his ears as he walked. You know what? Why not? I did say I'd like to get to know you better, new friend. You give Sol a playful nudge on his shoulder. He smiled as he rubbed the area where you nudged him. All right, Sol, lead the way. <laughs> Without wasting any more time, Sol leads the way going through the backside of the school near the gardens. I'm about to be being to the love of my life. Are you guys ready? Can you guys be my emotional support as I do this? <laughs> Thank you. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have left you. I... Say n nothing. No, my baby boy. D noticing your silence, Sol looks away, too scared to meet your gaze as his shoulders keep shaking. As his shoulders are my shoulders, yeah. Here. Beside you, Hugo extended his hand for you to take. You took Hugo's hands as he helped you up. Sol stands as well, but backs away from you a few steps. Have you ever liked someone sleepy? What's with that sudden question? Just answer. <laughs> you paused at the thought for a second, and the first person that appeared in your mind was... <sighs> I guess we'll pick Crow. You thought of Crow. That is so mean of me. I like Crow. I just like Sol a lot more. You still remember the day he introduced himself to you. 
No one was there for you. No one helped you much less than bother with your presence. But Crow came on time to save you. He made your years manageable and fun. You owe him a lot. You'd do anything to repay him. And maybe with a small linger of hope that he likes you back, oh honey. A smile made its way on your face, and it was enough confirmation for Hugo. Now dressed in your nightwear, you let out one last stretch, a yawn escaping from your mouth. Getting in your bed sheets, you laid in comfort. Today was a lot, you thought. Another yawn escaped your lips. You must really be tired, you thought, your eyes going half-flitted. And eventually, sleep took over. How cute. Interesting. So if you do crow's route, if you do crow's route and then you hang out with them and it goes badly, he doesn't come to visit you. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm kind of offended. Like, how dare you not sneak into my bedroom? What do you mean you don't want to sneak into my bedroom? All right, I'll go to class. Sorry, I couldn't bear to skip on the second day. Zul didn't say anything as his shoulders slumped, indicating his obvious dis disappointment. There was also something else in the dullness of his eyes. You were interrupted by Hugo. Uh, that's alright, Sleepy, but promise you'll hang out eventually. On the weekend, then. On the weekend, then, I'm sure. Wait. Soul spoke, making you and Hugo look at him. Can I at least take you to your next class? He asked you, and there was a hint of desperation within his reddish-orange eyes. You don't see what's the problem with it, so you agreed. Well, I'll see you at the usual spot, Soul. Hugo waved to the both of you before walking off. Let's go, shall we? Sol nods as you walk along. He's following beside you. You and Sol walk through the hallway towards your next class's classroom. You couldn't help but check on Sol. He seems nervous. You look down and see his hands are shaking. Keep walking. You didn't bother with him anymore as you kept walking. His shaking hand eventually was shoved into his pocket as you both resumed your walk. You finally reached the front of your classroom door. You peeked inside through the door and saw Crow in his usual seat already. You turned your attention back to Seoul. Just then, your classroom doors opened, and there stood Crow. His eyes perked upon seeing you. There you are, Sleepy. Just in time for the next class, too. Remember when we were in the greenhouse and you tried to kiss me and I tried to kiss you, but then Brittany interrupted us. Yeah, maybe we should continue to do that. Just noticed Soul's presence beside you. His eyebrows perked up as he gave the tall student a soft smile. Oh, and hello there, Soul. What brings you here? Soul, however, was dead silent, his gaze dark before responding. I'm just escorting Sleepy. That's really sweet of you to do, Soul. Crow didn't mind the mail any longer before turning his attention back to you. You should probably get in. The professor is coming any time now. Oh, right. Thank you again, Sol, for coming with me. You enter your classroom along with Crow, failing to see Sol's ever-darkening gaze as his fist clenched, drawing blood. He stared at the door, moving aside as he leaned on the wall right beside the door. Sol looked down to stare at his palm. Sol's right eye twitched, looking at the broken skin on his palm. The light in his eyes is gone. He raised his palm and licked the blood away. Ichabod. It's always been you. I should have dealt with him years ago. Each about like each about crane. Hmm. My conspiracies are brewing. You got on your tiptoes as you reach out to grab the book. However, the moment you grab it and pull it out, the shelf started wobbling. You immediately stopped. 
Uh, we'll just leave it this time. It's probably nothing worth checking for anyway. Besides, you aren't risking to becoming shelf pancake today. You left the book alone and went back to where Crow was. Oh, there you are, Sleepy. Have you found anything useful for your paper? It took a while. Nothing caught my eye from the books but this one. You raised the large book and showed it to Crow. The queen herself? That's pretty interesting. What kind of paper are you going to make out of it? I was thinking maybe about how a tyrant royal turned good, but was punished regardless of her actions. How does that sound? Crow was silent for a few seconds, making you tilt your head. Maybe he didn't hear you correctly. You okay? This actually sounds nice, Sleepy. Can I ask what's the inspiration? Oh! Well, I couldn't stop thinking about our conversation back in the greenhouse, so maybe I could base off some things here. Is that so? That's very smart thinking of you, Sleepy. Oh, I thank you. You said with a bow, making Crow chuckle at your actions before you both settle down to your chairs from the table. He seems restless about something. Let's... Crow? Upon hearing your voice, Crow's legs stop shaking before facing you, forcing his expression to soften, but the sweat drip from his temple stays otherwise. He's trying to keep a calm face. Yes, Sleepy? Is something the matter? Are you alright? You barely wrote anything and you seem... nervous. Is something bothering you? Crow gave a soft yet sad smile. Yes, I'm fine. Crow paused, his eyes averted from yours, refusing to look at them directly. Silence is deafening. It's making your heart race from nervousness. Do you think the queen was a good person, Sleepy? Huh? His sudden question caught you by surprise. My thoughts about Marie Antoinette? I read a few textbooks and documentaries, each have a different view about her, both negative and positive. But I'd like to hear from you, since this is your source of reference. His sudden interest in your paper confused you. Does it have to do with something about the queen herself or the situation? Either way, you thought about his question. Ah! Uh, she was an absolutely trash person. She was ignorant. She raved while people were starving. Is that so? Quite rude to be parting around while thousands of people are dying from hunger, don't you think? Crow was quiet, somehow waiting for more input from you. But once he sensed you aren't adding anything, his shoulders slumped. You're right. I would be angry too. He didn't say anything else, returning back to his paper, and slowly writes on while his other hand went back to rubbing his temples. Um, I have nothing to say. I don't have much knowledge about Marie Antoinette, actually. Oh? Is history not your fancy? It's not that, I just never got the time to look up her story. Crow just tilted his head to the side before tucking your hair behind his ear. She's an interesting woman. You should learn if you have time. Trust me. He says with a wink before turning back to his paper as he slowly writes on. His leg shaking underneath the table continued. She was an okay person. I believe she was a nice person. What makes you say that? She did try her best to be charitable, and she was humble. People just misjudged her. If you think about it, she was just a child when she was made queen. Wouldn't you be overwhelmed by the sudden responsibility placed upon you? You're very much right about that. Thank you for your input, Sleepy. For a moment, you saw a glint in Crow's eyes, a sigh of relief. Relief from what? Regardless, it seemed to calm him down as he started writing on his paper, going word after word. At the very least, you inspired him a bit. He smiled. Alright, you cuties. I think I have exhausted every option. <laughs> um, I really enjoy this game. I like, I love the character. I love, I think an important game, you have to have characters who are 
fun and not just the main characters so i'm really i love the um i love britney and i have an undying love for britney i love geo and hugo and their siblings so that goes to show i have a type but unfortunately we all know that i love Je i'm really happy jess turned around for me i like jess i i think she's very cute and adorable and poor daryl but i'm happy for my lesbians um who else i i adore crow i adore crow but i don't adore him romantically unfortunately i went right after soul asap and this has resulted in my undying love for him so here we are until i am able to get a hugo route soul is my number one I'm just saying he's probably still gonna be my number one regardless but it is what it is we love you we love him we love them we love it's fine anyway as always thank you so 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 much for watching thank you for like all the support and the love that you guys have been pouring in like crazy I like it makes me feel really honored that anybody even watches my little my little videos um, but yes, I hope you can feel all the love and all the energy that I put into them because I want us all to have a good time together. Um, as always, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you get to stay sleepy and stay cozy wherever you are and that you have a great morning, afternoon, night, wherever you are, whatever time it is. And I will see you next time. Bye!